Hello, viewers. I am adjusting and scaling my makgeolli recipe. It's time to enjoy some delicious Korean rice wine. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. So I learned a few things in Korea and I've made important adjustments to my previous recipe. I'll mark these adjustments with a diamond and this sound. So watch for these 11 new techniques in this video. And also watch for one new accident. This is the recipe, Juke Godobop, two stage brew, a total of almost four kilograms of rice and four liters of water. This is my new 10 liter jar that I needed. Larger brew size means uh, there's more consistency in the brew and less risk. New thing, I'm using the star sand. This is a new jar, I, I've washed it normally and I need to sanitize it. Another new thing, I am using frozen rice powder. So I've thawed this for three hours. Uh, this is the rice powder used for dock, the rice cakes. This has a consistent uh, moisture content for brewing. It's important that this is regular rice, not sweet rice powder, regular rice powder. And it's also important that this is just rice, that there's no sugar or other ingredients in this. So uh, I have to sift this rice powder. I'm going to sift it twice. So this is thawed, of course. This is a relatively coarse um, sieve, first of all, to sift this. The second sifting, I'm going to use this device, which is a little bit finer. So this takes a bit of time, but uh, it's important to uh, do it by sifting the rice. Um, we'll ha we should have a smoother juke, smoother porridge, and it should be better for the yeast to eat, and hopefully a better taste in the end. So the result, I have 900 grams of sifted rice powder, which is good. I hardly lost anything from the original weight on the package. So I need a big pot for this. Uh, let's make the juke. I'm adding three and a half liters of water. You might have noticed in the recipe, uh, there's still 400 more milliliters of water. I'll add that um, later. That's with the, uh, that's with the Naruk. I didn't forget that. So you're gonna be doing a lot of stirring in this recipe. Okay, so much stirring. My hand is wearing out. So uh, stir until the bubbles start forming, but then keep on stirring for five more minutes. Want it to be very consistently mixed and cooked. New thing, I'm setting this aside to cool overnight. No cold water ice bath this time. So the next morning, I check the temperature And even the top is too hot. It's still too hot, even after overnight. <laughs> okay, well, um, let's mix it up a bit. And uh, three hours later, it should be ready. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, so, okay, so that's good. In the meantime, we can mix up the Naruk. I know this says uh, in English, enzyme amylase, but it's important that it says in Korean Naruk. So I'm using my 360 grams of Naruk, um, 400, 400 milliliters of water, and half a package of yeast that I had. Um, stir this well, set it aside an hour. Then uh, we're going to mix this into the cooled Naruk in the same container. Oh, this is... Uh, Of course, this is quite strenuous to stir this for 15 minutes. 10 minutes just isn't enough. 15 minutes, it's really liquefied and pourable. That's the goal for this, to get everything mixed together. And uh, this way, I didn't have to try to get the sticky juke into the jar. I mixed in the Naruk, liquefied it first, and now it's pourable. I can pour the whole thing into the jar 
relatively easily. So this is the first stage of brewing. Let's uh, put the lid on loosely and put the jar in a dark place to ferment. Okay, let's look at this 12 hours later. It is, it is bubbling. It is quite active. Now we stirred it so much earlier, it's not strictly needed to stir it again. I, I did, be, well, because I need to take video and watch it, I wanted to see what it was like, but um, we stirred it so much at the beginning, it's not strictly necessary to stir it again. Okay, so it's bubbling a little bit, but uh, it's time for the second stage anyhow. This is the right timing. Second stage is steamed rice, hard steamed rice, go to bop. Three kilograms of sweet rice. Now that's quite a bit to wash. Um, another new thing I learned, uh, don't wash the rice too much. You have to rice the rice well, but not uh, don't wash it more than 15 minutes. You'll start uh, breaking things down too much. Okay, that needs to soak like normal. And then drain it. So a problem I had, uh, there's so much rice, I needed to drain it in two batches. My colander wasn't big enough. Okay, let's get the cloth ready. Um, so we're gonna steam a lot of rice at once. Finally, I get to use both layers of the steamer. Okay, pack that away and steam for 45 minutes. And I swap the trays in the middle just for fairness. And get the cooling racks ready. And I can spread it out. Only takes about an hour to cool to room temperature if you spread it out enough. It is important to, to check the temperature. And you'll know once you start mixing it by hand if there's any hot spots, but then, it, then it's too late. So while we're waiting, let's check on the jar. Um, so it's separated out and uh, nice bubbles. Uh, let's stir that. And. Uh, Okay, so the three kilograms of raw rice becomes about 4.3 kilograms after steaming and cooling. Let's add the second stage in. Okay, very exciting. Okay, this, so my 10 liter jar is just big enough. This is the maximum brew size for the 10 liter jar. This is about an eight liter recipe. That's the maximum size for this 10 liter jar. And I mix it up as well as I can. Uh, looks good. Put the lid on loosely again and put it back in the cupboard. All right, so uh, it it is fermenting. I, I can definitely hear it and uh, it's progressing nicely. Okay, so a little cloudy at the bottom there, but uh, not unusual. And it, it's uh, fermenting very well. I hear it every day, bubbling, 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 bubbling. It's, it's doing great, uh, progressing, uh, progressing well, even though it's a scaled up recipe. And here's a match test, day nine. With this kind of uh, large jar, the match test works really well. Now I'm going to bottle it on day 10, which is actually early because the match test, like you just saw, showed that it's still uh, fermenting. But I have to get this ready for a party. So uh, 
I'm going to uh, I'm going to filter it now. And my filtering setup is not really set up for this large scale. The pot is going to fill up, so I have to do it in many steps. So this isn't ideal. I'll try to figure out a larger scale way of doing this. Yeah, that pot is full. Okay, so I'll bottle two bottles while I can. three bottles. Okay, now get the rest in there. Okay, so I just want to hurry up and let's get this done. Oh no. Okay, so that's the accident. Uh, let's try that again. Pour it back in the jar because I have to refilter it. I lost a bit on the counter, spilling it. But uh, okay, but we have what we have. Let's see. Uh, let's see how it turns out. And um, it did seem to fer ferment completely normally, uh, no problem there. Um, so I have just a little bit more. Finish this up. Okay, so um, in the end, about 800, 870 grams of lees she gave me. Um, I would have had eight liters if I hadn't spilled so much. So that's nice. Um, have vigorous fermentation. It has a smooth texture. A nice sweet taste because I bottled so early. It's very easy to drink. And most importantly, it's enough to share with friends. So I got to share this with... Uh, um, at least 10 other people. So uh, um, hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, it, was, it was fun to brew. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for watching.